family and fellow soldiers, I'm the Professor, and this is the Moment of Truth. For this morning's briefing, predictably, I want to say a few words to mark the end of this year's New Black Media Appreciation Month. Now that it has come to its end, it's only fitting to take some time to express my own personal admiration for the family. And of course, whenever we say the New Black Media, we're talking about you. Yes, I know that may sound trite or old hat or cliche, but it's also true. Unless you've been one of the people trying to spread your worldview, sitting behind a microphone, posting videos and such, unless you actually do that, then it's very difficult to understand how crucial it is to have folks who listen to you. Never underestimate how important your involvement is in this. Without you, none of us would exist. We'd be like those slow, mush-mouthed bums who you see online who post asinine videos about alien abductions and other lunacy. They've been on YouTube since day one, they've had a channel non-stop for 15 plus years, but they still only get about 40 views per video. Folks like that aren't going to change anything. And I, as well as any other new voice of black media that you follow, would be just as irrelevant and ignored if it were not for you. We all like to think that our worldview has some sort of value, but you can't truly know that unless you present it to other people and see what appraisal they give of it. From the very beginning, I laid out the mission statement for the new black media, and that's to take control of the political discourse in the black community and to elevate the debate. We're still on that mission because the mission ain't over. We don't take a whole lot of time to pat ourselves on the back because as your new black media, we pride ourselves on always being about the business. Going into 16 or so years now of posting content on YouTube, and this is what we've been doing, many of us like myself have been involved in this kind of arena long before there was a YouTube. And how did we do it? How do we keep going for so long? A better question would be, how did you do it? You did it by giving your attention and your support to the truth. When you heard the truth, you didn't decide, oh, that's boring to me. Oh my gosh, I want to have somebody that makes me laugh. I want to hear about some internet beefing. You said, hey, this is some intelligent conversation. We need more of this. That's how you changed things. Sure, those of us behind the microphones, we put in a lot of work for a lot of years. And that being the case, it's only natural that sooner or later, we would start to look at what it is that we've built and say, hey, this is worthwhile. This is good. And that's why we've chosen this month to take some time to celebrate what we've accomplished, to acknowledge the wins and to learn from the setbacks, but most of all, to appreciate the support and camaraderie that we give to each other. That's what makes all of this possible. Black empowerment is not a popular thing, sadly, not even among black people. Before we came on the scene, what passed for black discourse was a complete embarrassment, a dumpster fire of epic proportions. The dusty dudes, hood rats, morons, and fools had completely taken over, and they had totally perverted the righteous work that the Dr. John Henrik Clarks, the Dr. Benz, the Dr. William Mackeys, the Dr. Van Sertemans, and others had done. People like Chancellor Williams and Dr. Francis Cress Welsing would have had a very difficult time recognizing what was supposed to be the black academic discourse in the early years of the 21st century. It had become just a complete and thorough train wreck. There's an old saying that it only takes one fool to undo the work of ten geniuses. Unfortunately for us, we had a lot more than just one fool despoiling and defiling the work that so many geniuses had done to establish an intelligent political and economic discourse for our people. They turned what had been a lush garden of intelligence into a putrid wasteland of ignorance. Our grandmaster teachers were no longer here to carry the load, but this was the moment when their work was going to be validated by their adherents. Dr. John Henry Clark said that one of the most important functions that any movement must be able to perform is to be able to bury the man and continue the plan. And that's exactly what we did. We picked up the torch that our grandmaster teachers had held and we ran with it. We had our work cut out for us, though. But we studied the Grandmaster teachers, and they did an incredible job of establishing a large, deep body of work that made it where even without them being here physically, their lessons were available to us in magnificent detail, so we could address every major relevant arena and issue of the day from their work without even the ability to personally ask them what they thought. That's how valuable what they did has been to us. We've worked to give rise to a grassroots effort to have intelligent black people talk to each other, exchange ideas, and push back against the lies. And that process starts by calling out and rejecting the liars. 
The bad guys have desperately tried to manufacture their own pretend version of the black media. They've tried to reverse engineer their own counterfeit version of us. Yeah, we see this scheme going on every six months or so, and it's been going on for the better part of ten years. All the time we get subjected to yet another attempt to legitimize some new tools, some intersectional clowns who were handpicked by this or that white institution or organization, or in the case of the Mark Lamont shills, they try to legitimize old clowns, but you, you were the ones who recognized real from phony. These bootlicks started out attacking us, and they just knew that you would get behind them after all. The white media had given them a platform, it didn't give us one wouldn't even acknowledge that we exist, though they did attack our talking points. They attacked the things that we said and stood for. That's how you understood that they could hear us and they feared us. These bootlicks started out attacking us, but you wouldn't get behind it. From roly-poly to the breakfast schlubs, they took their shots at us, but we stayed on our square. And in the end, they were the ones who had to change what they were saying. We haven't changed our message one iota, and we're not going to. We created a standard that they simply can't keep up with. That's why they had to change what they said. We were changing the game, and they simply couldn't keep up. But that's not to say the enemy hasn't been steadily trying to raise up bootlicks to counter-program against us anyway. And their little gangs of bought-and-paid-for tools would have made some traction and undermined us. That is, if you had gone along with it, but you didn't. And that's why they're still trying to see if there's some intersectional clown on Facebook that they can use, or some goofball that they've got on the university payroll at this or that college, or some chump on white media cable who might be able to get your attention. But you simply haven't listened. And they didn't expect that. You see, up until now, all they had to do was just trot out some Negro, put him in front of the camera, claim that this person has some sort of degree, or they're the leader of some organization. Here's a black leader here. The white media would simply bestow that title on somebody, and too many black folks would actually listen to them. And this confused and deranged our internal politics. All of this white media propaganda being sold to us by black faces. But that was only possible because there wasn't a real black media to tell the truth and to create a subculture that makes it where you have to say the right thing if you want black people to listen. See, that's the main contribution that we made. And by we, I mean you. Sure, those of us behind the microphones, we may have supplied the talking points, but you were the ones who reinforced them and promoted them because we were saying the things you wanted out there. And that built the wall that the bootlicks simply couldn't get through. You did that. Those of us behind the mic may have supplied the bricks, but you supplied the mortar. And don't even underestimate how important that is. If you've ever worked in masonry, you know just how crucial mortar is to building a wall. Without you, everything we've endeavored to do would have fallen apart. As the black media, we make it a point to promote and reinforce what Dr. John Henry Clark called the essential selfishness of survival. That's the reason why we've been effective. That's the reason why we've been able to shake things up. People were talking about how black folks need to be seeking out allies. That's one of the things that's kept us weak. We were finally able to tap into our true power when we recognized and accepted that we already had something far more powerful than allies or friends. We have family. That's why I start each moment of truth off with family and fellow soldiers. I never say followers because I'm not leading anything and you're not sheep. I say listeners, or fellow soldiers, or family, because that's what you are. Sure, you may be part of what I'm doing, but I think it's far more important that I try to make sure I'm part of what you're doing. We derive a lot of benefit from meeting here every day, but the one thing I like to think benefits us most is that we affirm and reaffirm that we're not alone. The white media's propaganda can only thrive if they have a captive audience, a demoralized audience who thinks that they're isolated make you think that you're just some lone nut because you don't agree with the white media's narratives, which you know aren't true. Worse, you feel helpless because you know the white media's lying, but the lies are reaching tens of millions of people. And how many people does the truth reach? Before the last 20 years or so, the white media could get away with it because we were unable to quickly and efficiently communicate with each other. The internet changed that in terms of making mass communication possible. But you are the ones who changed it in terms of making it where this kind of talk can find an audience, the right audience, the ones who will actually get off their butts and make some moves. It's about the truth. And that's the entire reason why the new black media even exists, 
because you decided that it's time. This is the mission that we're performing. It's about the truth. It's about our power. It's about ensuring that our people do not fade from this earth. So while the official duration of New Black Media Appreciation Month is over for now, we also know that this is something we do every day, so it never truly ends. And as long as we remain committed and dedicated, it never will. And that is something we can all appreciate. Good day, and be one. I'd like to take a moment to mention some of our contributors. Jacques Hargett, Jerlene Harris, Turk McKenzie, Pamela Guidry, and Darlette Hall. Salute to them and thank you to everyone for listening, liking, and sharing this message. Now more than ever, Black empowerment only exists because of you.